In 1957, director Leo McCary gave us his bittersweet masterpiece, An Affair to Remember, starring Cary Grant and Deborah Carr as two strangers who meet and fall in love on a transatlantic voyage. In 1994, Warren Beatty brought his version to the screen, entitled Love Affair, starring Beatty and the scrumptious Annette Bening. And now, anticipating 12 weeks of intense filming, the dark genius himself, Tim Burton, director of Batman, assembles an all-star cast to begin his own remake. So tonight, on The Making Of, we look at Tim Burton's The Making of Tim Burton's A Nightmare to Remember. I don't know, it's like, is everyone prepared to make a movie and stuff? Yeah! <laughs> to play the all-important role of Terry McKay, Tim has handpicked none other than Grace Under Fire's Brett Butler. Hey, how you doing? I'm just sitting here getting my face put on. Believe me, you do not want to see me without it. Hell, I'm wearing more makeup than a Klingon. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, baby. Okay, here we go. We'll make a movie. Hey, darling, how you doing? Hey, here, director. How you doing? I'm good. How you good. doing? How are you? you gonna make me look good yes. for the people out yeah. there? You yeah. make me look good. You sure? Yeah. You better. All right. It's, I just, I love this woman. Butler and Burton hit it off famously, and then filming begins. Compliments of the captain to celebrate your first transatlantic voyage. Well, thank you, Stuart. Mmm, pink champagne, my favorite. It's like they say back home. It's sweeter than a nun's dream, son. <laughs> cut, cut. What now? <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, two things, uh, actually. One is uh, that uh, his name's not Stuart. He's a ship Stuart. And uh, also, the line, sweeter than a nun's dream, I think that you should just sort of like, I don't know, stick with what's written in the script. Uh-huh. I'm going I'm to share something with you. You are really starting to get on my nerves. You know that? I mean, you're supposed to inspire confidence. I look over to you, you're all dressed up like Elvira. What the hell is that all about? Now, you listen to me, you little weirdo. I don't give a flying Louisiana lick about what you think of cinematic propriety. I am giving you the proper interpretation. I understand, but... Do you have a number one show? Right. Do you have a number one show? I, I don't see what this... Do you have a number one show? No. Then stop! Get out of here! Stop! Hey, we're doing a movie. All right, fun. Yeah! Woo! I don't know. It's like, it's, it's, she scares me. You know, I, I'm not used to working with people who look like they want to rip off one of my arms and beat me with it. But, um, but that's good. Fear is a good motivator. Lyle Lovett, on the other hand, is, is just a dream to work with. Are you following me around this ship? I was just going to ask you to dine with me. But we're both engaged. We can't be seen together. Cut! Lyle! Yes, sir. Uh, 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 it's like you, you got to play the scene closer to the uh, railing. All I'm seeing is your hair. Whatever you say, Chief. Why do you kiss his butt like that? Well, I don't. Bull crap! I don't. Well, I ain't going to make you act any better, and I'll tell you what else. He ain't going to hire you for his next movie, because you ain't no damn good in this one. I play Nicky Ferrante, an Italian gigolo, and Brett's character falls madly in love with me. Although on the set, she always calls me donkey face. But we're engaged to other people, so at the next port stop, I take her to meet my Italian grandfather, who's played by Irving Cohen, the legendary songwriter. And, well, this is a particular thrill for me because Mr. Cohen's written over 81,000 songs for fellows like Sophie Tucker and Al Jolson and, heck, who knows, I think even Courtney Love's group, whole. So, it's a real thrill. It's so good to see you again, Grandpa Irving. Likewise, Nicolo. Now I'd like to talk to the Goyle alone. Why don't you go to the chapel and get on those bony knees of yours and beg the dear Lord above to forgive you for wearing your hair that day? So you're in love with my Nicolo. Yes, but I'm frightened that he's just a playboy. He also happens to be a very talented painter. Really? Did he paint this? No, but he painted the vault behind it. 
and the entire kitchen and the baseboards in the breezeway. But that's Nicky. He don't charge much, but what I like about him is he don't leave the brushes all stiff at the end of the day because he soaks them in typentine, which is the proper thing to do when you're working with an oil-based paint. Not the latex. What the hell the is he talking about? Ping. Give me a C, a bouncy C. The nephew's back and the girl's okay, but he himself is having a bad hair day. His kisser's voice, and that ain't so good. Da da da, d d d, or whatever the hell else you want to put in there. This is a mistake. Is the scene over? <laughs> that Are is not what is... rolling at this time? Here. Who do you have to stop? Do you hear the word cut around here? Where's Boynton? Where's the dark genius? By week five, in an attempt to ease tensions and curry favor with his hostile cast and crew, Tim does an impromptu jig to the theme of his very own Pee-wee's Big Adventure. The attempt backfires. I don't know. I mean, to me, the apartment scene is the most important scene, sort of like in the movie, because, you know, Nick and Terry come back from uh, Europe and they vowed apart and meet in six months, you know, uh, and to see if they still love each other. And, 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 but fate has different plans. All right, rolling the camera. Action! Where were you? I waited and waited and waited. How did you find me? I looked you up in the phone book. Now you have some explaining to do. Now we agreed that six months after the voyage, we would be at the bottom of the Gotham City sewer system. Now, where were you? I got hit by a car. I don't believe you. Well, it's true. I got hit by a car and I lost the use of my legs. I don't believe you. Yeah, look again. Cut! Yes! Oh, man, that is what filmmaking is all about. <laughs> that was the one! Yahoo! <laughs> oh, stupid scissors, bullshit! Oh, what oh, that shit about? Oh, scissors on my leg, my oh, hole! Oh, 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 dark genius, my oh, hole! Oh, oh, twisted little oh, oh, How dare you! Hey, we're making a movie. Week seven, the cast and crew are assembled and given the devastating news that Tim Burton has left the film. Yeah! <laughs> Mr. Burton has gone to Japan for the winter for a much needed vacation. This is not a, a shutdown. This is a retooling. There's some talk of uh, animation, but I think it's very premature. Now. I'm going to ask you all to evacuate the building in an orderly fashion, as the crew from Captain Ron 2 will be needing the stage immediately. Thank you. Son of a... I have no way home. Can someone drive me? Missy Brett? People will make fun of my hair. Well, shame on you. Time is the place to be this week on NBC. On Monday night, it's an all-new Wings, followed by Seinfeld, then the best of Wings, and another Seinfeld. On Tuesday, it's a Seinfeld doubleheader, followed by Wings, and an all-new Seinfeld. Wednesday night, it's a Wings sandwich. Wings, Seinfeld, Wings, then empty nest. Thursday night is an all-Wings night, with Wings, Wings, the best of Wings, and Wings. Then Friday, join us as we take you on an all-ER weekend. So recapping then, it's Wings, Seinfeld, Best of Wings, Seinfeld, 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 Wings, Seinfeld, Wings, Seinfeld, Wings, Empty Nest, Wings, Wings, Best of Wings, Wings, E-R, 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 and E-R, this week on NBC. This Tuesday, former Beatle Ringo star, as you've never seen him before, in Richard Lester's A Hard Day's Journey Into Night. Who would have thought that Jamie would turn out to be a boozer? 
What's the big bloody mystery, Mum? Pops a miserly, drunken, belligerent, depressive. Oh, I'm getting a little tired of being called miserly. Why is it that this house bores me senseless? You're right, Jamie. It is boring. Let's say we all go outside. Come out and play. Shut your mouth. Leave him alone. Well, aren't we being a little self-righteous for someone who spends his life at the racetrack? I think I'll just slip upstairs. You stay where you are. And that goes for the lot of you. But I don't want to stay where I am. I want to go outside again. all new songs by Shirley Bassey, PJ Proby, Wayne Fontana and the Mindbenders, and Ice Cube and the Lynch Mob. Come on, George, rock it one time for Ringo. That's a hard day's journey in tonight, exclusively here on NBC. In the old days, TV was a tube-type thing. And it used to take nine guys to carry it in, but the screen was only that big. And you used to have to watch it one at a time, and then you'd tell your neighbor what you'd just seen so they wouldn't miss anything. But you were grateful at that time because you had a chance to learn your craft. Whether it was the guy with the dogs jumping through the hoop type thing, or the guy with the plates <laughs> Clear. But that was Jolson. The thing with the kids today, give me a C, a bouncy C. TV used to be something special to me. Now they got the butthead and the MTV. We used to have Lucy and Milton and Bing. My arm's getting numb and that ain't a good thing. Da, 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 D, 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 or whatever the hell else you want to put in there. Like it or not, Jackie Rogers Jr. coming up. <laughs> 